Hi, I'm Sam Slater from Fun Caliber, and today I've been joined by Bob Kainer, manager of the Schroeder US Midcap Fund. Hi, Bob. Hi, Sam. How are you? Very well, thank you. So you have some really interesting thoughts on growth at the moment. The fact that there's an abundance of it, that for the last decade, it's actually been quite a defensive investment. But now we're sort of seeing a move from secular growth to cyclical growth. Could you perhaps explain that a bit more, please? Sure. Um, I would say really since since the great financial crisis, in reality, we've had a period of fits and starts around economic growth. To use that old Ben Bernanke term, we never really escape, achieved escape velocity. Um, and in that period where we've had kind of um, unsustainable growth or, or fits and starts around economic growth, the market has really, market participants have really gravitated towards secular growth at any price. The handful of those companies that are showing growth irrespective of kind of what's happening in the broader economy. Um, and I think there's been a pretty significant paradigm shift. You've, you've seen a period where we are now have five trillion of stimulus in the system, and we are going to see explosive economic growth. Um, I would argue that growth is really no longer scarce. What is scarce is valuation, and that's a that's an incredible shift. It was used to be growth at any price because growth was so scarce. Now growth is prevalent, and market participants are finding, um, trying to find ways to access it with reasonable valuations. And frankly, in this market, that is the biggest challenge. And how does that affect the companies that you invest in? It's a really favorable backdrop for the small and mid cap space in particular. If you just think about that market, broadly speaking, um, you think about large cap, large cap is dominated by technology. 30% of the S&P 500 is weighted in technology. There's five stocks that make up almost 22%, I believe, of the benchmark. Um, And the S&P 500, it's really kind of characterized as secular type growth as opposed to cyclical. Um, When you look at the small and mid-cap space, it's very different. Over 50% of the benchmark in the small and mid-cap space is made up of what I would say is traditional cyclicals, industrials, materials, financials. Um, and we really only have kind of 15 to 20 percent of that of our market that falls into that secular growth of technology, telecom media. Um, so I would think just as growth, economic growth broadens dramatically, uh, it sets up for a much better environment for the small and mid cap market, something we really haven't seen for a number of years. And how is it generally in the U.S. at the moment? I see you're you're back in the office now. Is that common across the US now? And is the consumer spending all the money that they've been saving? It'll be interesting for us to see what could happen in the UK in a few months time. Yeah. um, So I would not say that we're all back to work. I am back in the office. Um, The trains, the commuter trains are are getting uh, more full, certainly. Um, And we're trying to come back to life. I mean, we've had, um, it's really state by state, but the vaccine rollout generally has been very successful. In New York State, you no longer need an appointment to get a vaccine. You can walk in and get an appointment, anyone over the age of 16. Uh, That's a significant hurdle. So I think we're opening up. I think the weather helps. Um, And yes, the consumer is spending. The consumer is spending the multiple stimulus checks that they have received um, going back to last June. And you're really seeing that kind of flow through, although they're spending it differently than they had. Um, We're starting to see lots more in-store traffic. We're starting to see kind of more travel bookings. Um, You're seeing um, TSA checkpoints. So people going through checkpoints at the airports has has gone up dramatically and domestic travel, domestic air travel has increased and road traffic is almost back to pre-pandemic levels. So the consumer is spending. Uh, The unemployment benefits are still there, the extended unemployment benefits, but not the way they were. It was $600. A week in incremental um, unemployment benefits, it's only down to $300. That that goes through September. But the economy is clearly opening up. We're seeing it through business spending, increased capex. We're seeing it through increased consumer spending. So I would say things, um, you know, things look very good in terms of what's happening in the U.S. at this moment. And perhaps you could finish by telling us about a couple of your holdings. You've got Valmont Industries and On Semiconductor Group, I see, in your top 10. They look quite interesting. 
Yeah, on Semiconductor, it's, it's a it's a very interesting semiconductor company. Um, they really focus on analog semiconductors and the power management side. One, we've been, I would argue, kind of, or I characterize us as kind of secular bulls around semiconductors. I would say the legacy mentality is that software is growth and semiconductors are cyclical. Um, we think that's changed. We've kind of had increasing, I would say, computing at the edge as you think about Internet of Things and other technologies as such, 5G, that's all been very good for semiconductors. One of the things that we believe is underappreciated with a company like On is their exposure to the auto industry. Uh, they have one of the largest exposure to autos um, across the semiconductor industry. Um, we are seeing increasing penetration of chips within the autos, and we think it's it's a it's a pretty significant shift because historically semiconductors were overly exposed to what I would call short cycle consumer products, whether it's phones or computers. As you see chip increased chip penetration um, into more industrials, whether it's factory automation or autos, those are much longer production cycles, um, and that's very good backdrop for the semiconductor industry. So we still like on semiconductor quite a bit. We believe there's lots of gross margin expansion, and the stock is still relatively inexpensive um, relative to the peers. Uh, Valmont's very different. It's, it's more of an industrials company, kind of a classic uh, structures, utility poles, telephone poles, uh, towers, lighting, all beneficiaries of kind of increased uh, municipal spending, as well as potential benefit um, from any sort of large infrastructure plan. And then on top of that, we have a secular growth opportunity with, with central pivot irrigation, uh, which is a really important component to, to agriculture, agriculture and farming as you think about uh, reducing waste and water consumption. So we believe that we're continuing to see increased penetration of central pivot irrigation systems, both in the US and in Latin America, um, and that really fuels some of the growth opportunity uh, with Belmont Industries beyond kind of the cyclical benefits that we're seeing of increased spending and, and the potential for an infrastructure bill. That's great. Thank you very much. And if you'd like to find out more about the Schroeder US Mid Cap Fund, please go to fundcaliber.com.